Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is December 9th, second edition here on the day. Went out and did some chasing today and saw Snoqualmie Falls at about a 10-year high and it's going to be even higher tomorrow afternoon. A lot of rivers across western Washington are going to reach major flood stage and several of them have the potential to be all-time record high crests. There's a lot of moderate flood stage here, even for the east slopes of the Cascades down into portions of Oregon as well. We're going to dive into those details. We'll see what is coming up here as we go through the next couple of days and what is going to be going on through the extended forecast as it looks like we are going to remain active. But you can see this is now getting a little bit repositioned here as we dig this trough down off to the north and west of the Hawaiian Islands. And basically, this atmospheric river, you can start to nickname it here, the Pineapple Express. It starts to arrive from the Hawaiian Islands. And you can see the ridge of high pressure here, like gears in a machine with the low pressure system coming down across the Gulf of Alaska. So if we take a look here, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of this here over the next few days. Barricades all over the place. You can see our flood advisories and warnings, and flood watch all over the place here for West. Washington. There's also some wind advisories as well. Some gusts getting into the 40 mile per hour range or so. So we could get some trees down from that. When things get saturated, trees fall much easier here. A lot of shallow rooted trees here in the Pacific Northwest. And you can see the wind advisory is down into Northwest Oregon, some of the Willamette Valley here as well. Some gusts to 45 for some of the higher terrain. This goes through 10 p.m. tomorrow night. You can see the wind advisory there. Nice job by the National Weather Service, Portland, Oregon. Now, again, some windy conditions coming for eastern Washington as well. You can see there is even a high wind warning for some of the portions of southeast Oregon, uh, Washington there and some of northeast Oregon or Spokane right there. But look at some of these wind gusts here as we go through the day tomorrow and all, all the way on through Thursday morning, I should mention. So Spokane gusting potentially to 50. Look at Ritzville, 50 to 60 miles per hour. So again, some strong winds rolling in here. What a storm train we have been having. Just absolutely huge amounts of precipitation and we're not even close to being done yet and the, probably the more substantial impact still yet to come and if you want to get a nice affordable home weather station buy one of these for somebody for a christmas gift and this one makes a great gift and it's got no moving parts all wireless you have it up and running in a few minutes great smartphone app click on the link down below to save 10 percent so looking at the North American model, let's go over the winds here really quick. You can see as we go on in through tonight into tomorrow, you can see we do get some gusty winds here across the region. And watch as I scroll on in through tomorrow morning for eastern Washington. You're talking about some gusts potentially up over 50 miles per hour there into some of the lower elevations. But look at some of the higher terrain of the Washington, Oregon Cascade, some of the east slopes as well, gusting strong winds. You can see this would be blew up past maybe some gusts up towards 60 miles per hour. Coastal so area is getting pretty windy also. Now, the European doesn't quite have the, the same strength with some of these winds, but again, you could get some of these gusty conditions, especially across the higher terrain. But of course, the big news story here is the atmospheric river activity rolling into the region. And here we are looking at 300 millibars, or about 30,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Japan is to the far left. There's the Pacific Northwest to the right, Hawaiian Islands to the bottom of this image, and Alaska to the top. So if we take a look at this, you can see this atmospheric river is going to be with us as we go through tonight into tomorrow all the way on in through the day on Thursday before finally we get a bit of a break as we start to head towards this weekend. However, it may not last too long because as we get on in towards Friday, look at this ridge out across the Aleutian Islands in western Alaska and it's pretty well amplified and it's got this trough digging down across the Gulf of Alaska out over the Pacific Ocean. So it keeps us kind of in this warmer air as we go on in towards Friday, some colder air tries to slide down across interior portions of British Columbia and moving on east of the Rocky Mountains there. But we continue to scroll off in towards Saturday and Sunday. You can see how the jet stream gets really active again here for us in the Pacific Northwest as we go through Sunday into Sunday night and then into, into Monday. We have additional atmospheric river potential ongoing. Look at this potent jet coming across the Pacific Ocean pointed at the west coast of North America. Now, looking at the artificial intelligence, this is the 18th. Z run hot off the presses, put this into motion. There goes our nasty atmospheric river. I mean, this thing is just going to hammer us here over the next couple of days on already very saturated soils. And Again, that'll be with us for some portions of the Pacific Northwest through Thursday. And you get this deep low out across the Gulf of Alaska. It kind of shuts things off for a bit. That colder air slides east. But the look, 
look at this. As we go through Sunday, we start to get another system and potentially another strong atmospheric river. Look at this beastly low moving up towards Haida Gwaii, towards the Queen Charlotte's, and then Western British Columbia with a potent atmospheric river associated with it as we go through Sunday into Monday. A little bit of a break again, but additional systems rolling through next week. And then watch what happens as we go on towards the end of the following week. Look at this low pressure system just burrows into Vancouver Island. Hopefully something like that would stay progressive because that could really bring some nasty flooding conditions on, you know, we're already saturated here across the region. And yeah, you'd still have runoff coming out of the, you know, the, the hillsides and whatnot. You know, have it doing that for several days, maybe even, you know, 10 days or whatnot. Things are going to be saturated for a while. And then you bring in another atmospheric river or a series of them, and that can bring huge issues on top of already historic flooding that's probably going to be occurring here as we go through the day tomorrow and Thursday. So taking a look here, you can see this precipitation continuing. It's pushed up across western Washington as we go through the day tomorrow. It hangs out for portions of Thursday as well and finally tries to get out of here. At least the very heavy rainfall ends for the most part. I mean, we're still continuing some of that precipitation there across western Washington, southwest BC. Then it looks like another system slides through on Sunday and then a much more robust system as we go through Sunday night into Monday. Again, look at this low here moving towards Haida Gwaii. 977 millibars, 973. It is just deepening as it approaches the coastline. A 964 monster with a potent atmospheric river pointed at the Pacific Northwest. What a December. I mean, my goodness, we're probably going to have some all-time record high precipitation values if some of these models uh, do verify as we continue on in through the month for some locations here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, day one excessive rainfall outlook. This goes all the way through tomorrow morning. So again, you can see the slight risk. I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see that a little bit better. And this day two, they talked about the potential here. We may get an upgrade to moderate here for that. In fact, I'm going to upgrade that right now. I don't know when the next update comes out, but we may get a moderate risk here, and that would not shock me for some of the Washington Cascades and Foothill areas. Then we go to day three, and you can see the marginal hangs with us there as we go on in towards, uh, this would be for Thursday morning to Friday morning. And looking around the region, you can see over the last couple of days, big time precipitation amounts, especially across the higher terrain. A lot of areas up six, seven, eight, nine inches, some areas up over 10 inches here. Look at portions of the coastal range for Oregon as well. And again, this is only Act 1 and Act 2. It's probably going to be more severe. And again, everything very saturated is going to become runoff immediately as it falls here over the next couple of days. So looking at 24-hour running totals, again, we're going to kind of have a rain shadow out there. This goes through about tomorrow, 18Z. This is the 18Z European, by the way. But look as we scroll on in through the day tomorrow. So by Wednesday, 4 o'clock, look at Seattle, SeaTac. Two inches, two inches maybe for downtown Seattle, Boeing Field there, but a sharp gradient there, precipitation gradient, as we are going to get some rain shadowing ongoing. But as I scroll on in through here, I mean, this is a 24-hour running total, and you see some of these just huge amounts across the McKing and Snohomish County, all the way down into Pierce County as well. I mean, yeah, a lot of rainfall still incoming here, folks. Again, with potentially historic flooding, very unusual developments here coming as we go through the next couple of days. Now, Looking at the Snoqualmie River, if you thought today was crazy at Snoqualmie Falls, which in fact was probably a, the biggest crest here in the last 10 years, look at what tomorrow is going to bring up towards 60,000 cubic feet per second for Snoqualmie Falls. Could be some very severe flooding downstream. And look at all this purple on here. These are major flood stages, and a lot of these are going to be approaching or exceeding some of the record crest values. And even the Yakima River over here, you check this one out. This is one. Nanchi River as well, supposed to get up into major flood stage also. So if we take a look at Snoqualmie, there we go, Snoqualmie Falls, but look at Skagit near Mount Vernon. The record crest is 37.4 feet. We're right now forecast to be over 41 feet. We've never seen river levels this high in the recorded river history. Snohomish River at Snohomish is now still above the record crest, 33.8. The record was 33.5. Just some amazing crests here showing up. And look at the Skagit River near Concrete. Are you kidding me? I mean, you're breaking this record by over five feet. So yeah, I can't say enough about this. Do be very careful. Hopefully everybody is in a safe area here. I was out there chasing and I we ran in to talk and talk to people that were actually cut off from their home. So hopefully you have a place to stay and whatnot. And 
all your arrangements are made because some people may not be able to get in and out of their homes in the region here for a few days. And we saw some of that activity just today. So it's just going to get worse over the next couple of days. Now, looking at the artificial intelligence here, if we put this into motion, again, that atmospheric river ends. And then again, I think I already showed this one here, but yeah, I might be repeating myself. Let's back this up a little bit. Yes, I did show that one. So we're going to skip that one for now. But if we look at total precipitation in inches, and again, of course, over the next couple of days, we got big amounts coming, as you can see, really targeted here, Western Washington, some Southwest BC, and some additional rainfall here coming for portions of Oregon, but not nearly as much as what's coming for Western Washington. Then we start to scroll off again towards Sunday. And you can see the precipitation again building as we go through Monday and then next week, those big atmospheric rivers potentially returning again. Man, that would be such a bad scenario. Look at some of these amounts. We're almost pegging the scale here as we go out up over 300 hours in the forecast. Things can still change, but man, the models have really been showing those atmospheric rivers continue to roll in as we go on in towards the second half of December. And the ensemble as well. So this is the ensemble mean. And this is one of our best tools for mid and long range forecasts as we continue all the way out towards hour 200. We're now going hour 276. And again, huge amounts of precipitation, really starting to get some good ensemble agreement. So the confidence is definitely increasing here as we go on in towards December 20th or so and on in through maybe towards Christmas as well. So look at Snoqualmie Pass. This is the freezing level. And you can see it's up over 10,000 feet at times over the next next few days. Uh, looking at snow depth in inches, I'm going to put this into motion. As you can see, as we scroll through six days, there is really not much good to be said about the snowpack as we go through December 15th upcoming here. And uh, Oregon Cascades are especially sparse, but yeah, we're going to be losing a lot of that snowpack. It's going to get really messy up there with all this rainfall and these warm temperatures. Because look at Mount Hood. You're at 5,300 feet here at the surface, that's 10,000 feet. And again, you're not spending much time with the freezing level below 10,000 feet. There goes Crystal Mountain as well. This has been just recently updated. And again, you can see all that warm air around us. So we look off into the extent of forecast and we're checking every single model run here because I'm just hoping something finally breaks and we get a pattern change as we go towards the end of December. I like snow more than anything else, so I'm kind of rooting for that always. But you can see this cold air is largely locked up across northwest Canada into portions of Alaska. And you see we're just bathed in this warm air here across the Pacific Northwest. We scroll all the way out. Now we're towards December 15th and 16th. You see the artificial intelligence deterministic run here finally show some cooler air start to get in here. That could bring us some mountain snows, but the ensemble mean is not really showing that as well. So this has kind of been going on for the last few days and this cold air kind of continues to get pushed back at times. So we scroll off into the future again and you see we finally get some colder air showing up as we go through December 21st or so. But again, it's not a huge signal in the ensembles. So you don't want to get too excited about what you're seeing here on the left. But look at some of this cold air trying to sag across central BC as we go off towards Christmas Eve, Christmas. Maybe we'll get really lucky and we'll flip this pattern up and we'll get some kind of a white Christmas or something for some of the region. But yeah, a big difference is kind of showing up. The cold air is there, but much more progressive on the deterministic model. So six to 10 day or temperature outlook, the West, just this bullseye here. Of course, the ridge is offshore, atmospheric rivers into the Pacific Northwest. There's the above average precipitation signal. That should make sense. Here's the 8 to 14 day, all the way through December 23rd, above normal conditions. I mean, my goodness, look at that for the West. And if we take a look at the 8 to 14 day precipitation goes without saying we are above normal. Now, the 8 to 14 day hazards outlook with the experimental product, there's risk of hazardous temperatures. What I want to show you here, though, is they continue that moderate risk for heavy precipitation for the Pacific Northwest all the way down towards Northern California as we go through the 20th or the 23rd. And the risk of heavy snow finally starts to arrive. They continue to show this here. I wouldn't get too hung up on this just yet. We'll watch this over the next few days before we start to get too excited about the return of that snowpack to the Cascades. It's going to come at some point, right? But, you know, we'll see how long that takes. And there's a risk for some high winds as we continue to be in this stormy period with the storm track just taking aim at our area. There's the Patreon page. I'll do my normal briefing again tomorrow. Hopefully you guys have everything situated out there. I will be chasing over the next couple of days. Hopefully I'll be able to go live at times as well. Um, but yeah, uh, stay safe and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.